Good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to uh, talk about my poster, um, which is right here. Uh, the title is Screening for H. pylori in Hospitalized Patients with Upper GI Bleed. Um, as we know, uh, there are 150,000 people are hospitalized every year because of GI bleeding. Around one-third to two-third of these patients have GI bleeding because of peptic ulcer, because of H. pylori. Um, there is not a good amount of data how many of these patients with peptic ulcer bleeding are screened routinely for H. pylori. The MASTIC uh, 3 guidelines recommend everyone to be screened for H. pylori if they have peptic ulcer or its complications such as peptic ulcer bleeding. So this study was undertaken as a cohort study in our single institution um, to study um, uh, how many patients with peptic ulcer bleeding over the last six years have been screened for H. pylori. Um, so from our administrative database for hospital, we took all patients uh, with a primary or secondary diagnosis of uh, peptic ulcer bleeding, um, and then we mapped those data to our administrative database for endoscopy. And uh, through that, we documented that these people, in fact, did have peptic ulcers. Uh, we excluded patients who had other causes of uh, bleeding, such as varices or any tumor. Um, after we identified our population, um, then uh, we matched our uh, patient population uh, with our electronic health record data to, guide, uh, to get all the lab data about H. pylori screening and also patient demographics. Um, so for the results, we had a total of 189 patients that uh, met the criteria of peptic ulcer bleeding and hospitalization who underwent endoscopy in our institution. Um, these patients did not have any other secondary cause for bleeding. Um, and what we found, as shown in this pie chart, um, around 45% did not have any screening um, at any given time of, uh, since the hospitalization. Um, and the length of follow-up varied from six months to four years. 55% uh, of the patients uh, were screened for H. pylori according to guidelines. However, as you can see, the breakdown was 26.5% patients were screened with histology, 14.9% uh, with serology, um, and um, both CLO test and histology was used in 10.1% of patients. Um, CLO test alone was used in 3.2%, and urea breath test was very rarely used. As we can see, only 0.5% of patients had urea breath test used. Uh, for this pie chart, we included any kind of test that was done either during the hospitalization or after the hospitalization, as long as we had a follow-up data. So what we found was uh, around half of the patients, um, to, be uh, to be accurate, 45% of the patients did not have any screening for H. pylori, uh, in spite of having a documented peptic ulcer bleeding. Um, and we, we, we think these results are generalizable to other institutions, even though this is a single institution study. Uh, some studies um, um, on Medicare data have shown that the compliance to H. pylori testing is, varies from 30% to 45% in this population. Um, not only we found that uh, we were a little suboptimal with respect to the screening, we also found the utilization of preferred test with high accuracy, such as urea breath test, uh, uh, was less than what is recommended in the Maastricht 3 guidelines. Um, we also found the number of biopsies taken uh, when a person is on PPI and having bleeding uh, should be two or more than two. But most of our patients who got the biopsy done either had one biopsy um, or maximum uh, two biopsies. Uh, we also found people who were um, tested and who came positive and were treated uh, did not have a retesting done. Uh, neither did patient who had initial histology test done um, and came up negative. They were rescreened because there was concern of them being false negative. So we think there should be future efforts to look at this problem, especially in a prospective fashion. Uh, one of the key things that can help in this quality improvement initiative uh, would be to find uh, or develop a strategy for post-hospitalization urea breath testing. Uh, it has been shown by Gisbert that post-urea breath test is very accurate um, as far as you change post-hospitalization from a PPI to H2 blocker. Um, so a follow-up of our study would be a prospective study uh, we will take a, a cohort of patients and uh, try to have a quality improvement initiative to increase our compliance to H. pylori screening from around half to more than 90%. Um, and uh, we are using these three quality indicators. Um, first, 
um, every patient with peptic ulcer bleeding should be screened for uh, one or more H. pylori uh, recommended test. And uh, if they are uh, tested positive and treated, uh, they should be uh, retested for H. pylori uh, to ensure they are eradicated, especially in population like ours, which has a high resistance to standard H. pylori treatment. Um, we also want to see that every person that comes positive for H. pylori gets eradication. Um, and sometimes uh, uh, during the hospital discharge process, the test of the uh, H. pylori may come positive later on and um, uh, no one may be able to capture the results. So we're also tracking that as a quality indicator that anyone who gets a positive H. pylori test, even post-discharge, uh, gets an eradication treatment. Um, well, that's uh, very much it uh, for the poster. Thank you very much.